Hello everybody and welcome to the podcast. I gotta say I'm digging putting together this new YouTube channel, fin doing some finishing touches to improve quality and, and uh, just to change up the way we make highlights and things like that. I'm really excited. We're going to be doing a big media launch in, uh, in September so that people actually start finding this thing. In the meantime, I'll be trying to get my uh, some of my audio listeners um, over here from the six years that I've been doing this podcast. If you happen to be new to it, I got uh, between twenty and 50,000 listeners per episode on there. Wherever you get um, your podcast, you can download the app. If you prefer that to YouTube, and one of the things that I wanted to take the time, since this is a shorter episode than normal. My guest today, who's fantastic, uh, just didn't have as much time as I can normally get out of my guest. Was super busy, fantastic talk though. This was done April 24th, just in case that helps with context, in case you're wondering if I changed my hair or something. I combed my wet shower hair uh, for you today because this is, we're all learning together what the future of my hair is going to look like. Nobody knows. We're all scared. We're all a little uncertain about it. But thank you for watching. And if you add comments in the comment section, I'll make sure and address them, integrate them into what you guys want to know about from future guests. So do that. And um, if you follow me on social media, I'm especially active on Instagram, but anywhere, uh, Twitter and, and Facebook, uh, you can maybe give me some suggestions. What I really am thinking about doing, because I'm doing a big launch in September, is that I will perhaps be putting together some sort of a forum or discord or something like that to create a little more of a community. I've started doing it on Patreon, but I, I definitely want anyone who wants to uh, be involved to be able to uh, be involved because I think a lot of this uh, this stuff that the reason why you guys watch is because there's all these incredible, interesting ideas and, and bits of research that you get to learn about. And if you're like me, <laughs> you sometimes have your mind blown by these new insights and and kind of have these paradigm shifts even and see the world very differently and then it's kind of hard when you when you don't have kind of a community of people to share those ideas with and uh, and your friends and then usual folks that you're used to talking to um, uh, uh, sometimes you can't relate some of this stuff with them and so I'm looking for ideas to do that I haven't decided on the exact right way to do it just yet so in the meantime, commenting along in this YouTube section is a really good way to at least get the ball rolling and see how much interest there is in that. So thank you for indulging me in a little bit of a long intro, uncharacteristically long YouTube intro, and I hope you enjoy today's episode. Here we are. Hello everybody and welcome to the Here We Are podcast. I'm Shane Moss. Joining me today, return guest. Sonia Lubomirsky is joining me today. Did I nail it? Close. <laughs> <laughs> what did I? <laughs> no, no, it, no it, was, it was good. Lubomirsky. Lubomirsky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> this close, this close. Oh, uh, I love it. Um, okay. All right. There we okay. go. I, I'm, yeah. on, I'm on track now. The hard right. part's yeah. over. Okay. And now we're into the fun stuff. Why don't you introduce yourself to folks? Tell, uh, tell people a little bit um, about what you do for those that didn't hear our first episode. Sure, Shane. Um, yeah, so I'm a professor of psychology uh, at the University of California, Riverside. Uh, I've been studying happiness for the last 30 years. Actually, I just had my 30th anniversary of this happiness research uh, in fall uh, 2019. So yeah, so I'm research I do research on happiness, on gratitude, on kindness, and on connection. Um, uh, so what, uh, uh, it's been a while since I've talked to you, but yeah. with, with uh, everything currently going on, you must be uh, you must be quite busy collecting all sorts of new data and <laughs> and running some new studies. Um, are you are you jumping on the? Uh, how how are you doing over? This is this is the the general feel that I get from most people is just like uh, it, the usual response is 
Uh, how am I doing? Oh, pretty good, all things considered. Yeah. There's a lot of that. And then, right, right. And then there's uh, a lot of like, well, I've never been so creative yeah. coming up with all sorts of ideas. Well, you know, there was a New York Times article that said that never in the history of science have, have so many scientists turned their research onto one topic in all fields, you know. Uh, and, and partly it's because a lot of research is halted, so I can't do research that's in person anymore. Um, one thing that I've been interested in is, is connection, sort of how do we connect to other people and the role that social connection plays in happiness. I think it's really the key to happiness. Mm. Um, and so it's really, really relevant today. Um, another topic that I was really interested in for the few years before this happened is are the differences between face-to-face -face connection and digital connection. So it's hugely relevant to what is happening. Uh, so I have a lot to say about that. Um, and anyway, and then we ended up, we had some data on how connected and happy people felt on February 12th. And so we decided to follow up with those folks. They, they're mostly in the U.S. and U.K. Uh, and we collected sort of a, another wave from the same people, uh, first week of April. So then we could compare. Fascinating. Yeah. Oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. We actually just submitted our first paper from that project last night. Um, and then I have a colleague at UBC, Liz Dunn, and her uh, grad student, they also collected data pre-post on connection uh, from uh, University of British Columbia uh, undergrad. So we have sort of two different samples. So, and the, you want to know what the answer is? What do you think uh, happened? Uh, 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 um, <laughs> <laughs> Over time, oh boy, okay. I, I, I love when I get to be put on the spot and feel nervous <laughs> during my, uh, I would say, oh boy, it's, it's so many things mixed together because financial insecurity is a big, a major player in a lot of people's lives, but right. people are reaching out and forming all of these social connect everyone's like all right starting from my friends in first grade and working my way to the present i'm gonna reconnect it's with true. everyone there's all this nostalgia yeah. that's happening yeah. of like yeah. everyone's posting pictures of yeah. like oh look at me when i was a kid see how much i used to smile back then in the old world <laughs> and, and uh yeah I, I would say that on the day-to-day most people are doing pretty good. It's more mm -hmm. of the existential, bigger picture stuff that has yeah. people concerned. No, that's a good answer. Yeah, that's a good answer. Uh, you have some potential as a scientist. Um, <laughs> well, well, we, you know, it's a, it's just a snapshot. So we have two samples. So comparing basically early February to early April, so pre-post, because yeah. um, in most countries nothing was happening yet. Um, uh, so what we basically found that in terms of in terms of satisfaction with life, uh, no change overall, no change. But in terms of social connection, um, in Canada, my colleagues found that a little bit of a drop in social connection. These are college students. I think college students' lives are much more disrupted than than other people's. Well, not everyone else, but like I have two kids who were in college at the time. One was doing a study abroad program in Paris, uh, and both of them were just you know their college lives were completely disrupted. So finally they have to come home and live with their parents. So that sucks, right? On any level. Um, my, our sample uh, was sort of adults, like community adults. Anyway, we found actually an improvement in loneliness. So people reported feeling less lonely uh, after social distancing. Huh. I think it's, be yeah, I think it's because it's like, we're all in the same boat. People are bonding, spending more time with their family, friends, if they are in the same household, reaching out, as you said, to their first grade friends and, you know, everyone. So now we'll see. That was just a snapshot of kind of the first wave. Uh, we want to follow up maybe in a month or so to see, like, once it sinks in, is it, like, more depressing? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Has it not sunk? I guess it hasn't sunk in yet. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, think, I think when summer, I mean, yeah. it's... Uh, so, somewhere in the U.S. anyway, yeah. rolls around and people are really missing out on their regular things that they would be yeah. doing or festivals yeah. or things like yeah. that. Because right Burning now there's Man still a lot of like, you know, I kind of needed a break from work anyways. Right. <laughs> and people's hair. It's so funny. <laughs> we had a faculty meeting at my department uh, about 35 
professors and I was noticing, you know, you're scrolling through the gallery view and, and like, God, the guys are looking really grisly now. Yeah. Um, look at this yeah, is the yeah, longest yeah, no, this that. has ever been. I think this is maybe the longest uh, <laughs> um, uh, my uh, top of the head hair has ever been as well as, as, the, <laughs> as the facial hair. Um, so, yeah, looking good. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, at first you're right. First is sort of a break. Oh, I get to spend time with my family or, but then it's like, yeah, just knowing that it's, we're in it for the long haul. I mean, at first we thought, okay, God, can I do this for two weeks? Can I do this for one month? And it's like, can I do this for three months, six months? Yeah. So I think, you know, we, uh, you know, human beings really have a need for social connection and need to belong is sort of a formal word for it. Yeah. And so we try to satisfy that need any way we, we can. And so we're arguing with these new data that, you know, people, right, as you say, like, if I can't connect in person with my friends and colleagues and family, I'm going to connect via Zoom and, and FaceTime. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, at some point, so I guess that, that's the question. It's an empirical question. At some point, is that going to just be like, not enough? Mm -hmm. And there's so many things we miss out on when we don't have face-to-face -face interactions, right? We don't have touch. We don't have smell. You know, some of that synchrony, the eye contact is not as good. It's like a little bit worse. I've been trying to understand what, what is it about in-person interactions that are so powerful and impactful, right? And one of my colleagues said, well, it's like you're breathing the same air and maybe it's something about that. And, and I have a theater professor colleague who said, well, you know, when we speak, we send vibrations through our bones, literally. And we're somehow like not sensing those vibrations when we're not in person, you know, when we're on a screen. So mm. I don't know it's really interesting. You know, I've, I've, I've been thinking about the Maslow's monkeys here, here, and, here and there yeah. of the, of the wanting the cloth, the mother and how, um... Oh, Harlow, Harlow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, no, Harlow. Harlow. Yeah, Harlow's, Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma Maslow's the hierarchy. So exactly. that's what I was trying not to screw yeah. up. And then I did anyway. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, the uh, uh, Harlow's um, mm -hmm. and and the the cloth mother and the and yeah. and, and how mm -hmm. how much we're missing that physical mm -hmm. connection right now. I I think the sex doll business really missed out <laughs> on a whole market by m not making them cuddle dolls uh, as well. Had they had yeah. the foresight too. Well, Wisconsin <laughs> is the state, right? That's where you are now, right? That they had those cuddle, uh, uh, right? The first state where you could pay someone to cuddle with you. You know about oh, this? Oh, I don't know. Oh. I'm, I'm disappointed. I've been trying to keep up with cuddle news as much as possible. I'm, I'm a, I'm a real cuddle advocate, but uh, yeah, no, yeah, this, no, this I, was in the, yeah, this was a big thing. Like you could, and I actually have a friend who, um, who, who was living in Wisconsin and he did it and he said, you know, you just go and it's, and you pay someone to cuddle with you. And it's this young woman came out and she was wearing, you know, a t-shirt and leggings and they kind of cut, it was non-sexual, you know, and they cuddled and yeah. And it was nice, and but then they some they got shut down. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> cuddling is illegal. Did you know that cuddling is illegal? I don't know. Uh, it sounds or paying about for right. cuddling is illegal. Uh, sounds about right. <laughs> anyway, physical touch. Physical touch is very important for connection. Yeah. My my uh, my colleague and friend Dacker Keltner at Berkeley. Uh, actually, I just saw an article where he was quoted. He said something like physical touch is the language of social connection. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. Yeah, I, I wonder if, if you uh, would be interested in, in commenting on how, how much of this, kind of the difference between what we assume that we want and, and need, mm -hmm. or, or if you ask someone, what do you want to do today, or, or what things are important to you, and what things actually show some like long-term benefit for people, because I have, you, you know, I tell myself like, Oh, I was born to bubble. I like I'm a I'm a natural hermit <laughs> and, <laughs> a, anyway, and and I I don't really like social gatherings that much anyhow. Yeah. But you yeah. know, I I, I remember um, I had uh, Nick Epley on um, mm -hmm. the, five years ago or whatever, t mm -hmm. talking about this this study of of making people talk to a stranger on their subway ride right. into work and then uh, and no one actually wanted to do that and then and then the big takeaway punchline mm -hmm. was that that people often um reflected positively on on the experience after the fact when they were forced to do it and mm -hmm. i wonder how much of like i i would say that i i'm i, w I don't really consider myself a happy person i don't think that i'm unhappy i just don't mm -hmm. really 
think of mm. myself as that yeah. happy of a person. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes I wonder if it's just because like my, what, what I tell myself that I want, which is my natural disposition towards kind mm. of isolation is probably just not the healthiest thing for mm. a human primate, right. whether, whether they consciously yeah. think that they yeah. want that or not. Yeah, well, I think expectations are really, really important, play a really important role in happiness. And that, that study you mentioned with, with the, the trains in Chicago is great, right? So people, right, they think like, oh my God, I'm not going to want to, I, I just want to listen to my music. I just want to read my, my whatever, the newspaper. I don't want to talk to a stranger. And then people actually enjoy talking to strangers. There's also a study by Liz Dunn uh, where people um, uh, felt happier after chatting with their barista, just sort of saying hi. And, you know, like you think like, that's not going to make a huge difference in your life, but it does. And I, I really, social connections are so critical. And actually there's a disconnect with introverts and extroverts where introverts think that connecting with others, spending more time in social interaction isn't going to be as rewarding. Actually, they do find it very rewarding more than they think. Mm-hmm. Um, but but in, as a general rule, expectations are so important to happiness. And in fact, uh, you, you probably have seen data on like sort of who's the happiest country. And, uh, uh, usually the Scandinavian countries are on top and Denmark often is sort of the happiest country. Um, and I read this really nice article that, so, that shows that um, the reason that the Danish are so happy is because they have low expectations or lower expectations than others. So Yeah, uh, that's yeah. so interesting. So, yeah. so it, oh, that, it, yeah, I mean, I can definitely see, um, uh, you know, I, I often go to social interact, uh, you know, uh, social gatherings and stuff as self care, I'm not. I'm not yeah. going as like yeah. this. Yeah. Sounds like a fun time. I'm yeah. going yeah. like a. I had better go out and interact yeah. with people, oh, yeah. <laughs> or I yeah. might lose my mind. Yeah. Whereas, uh, and, and so maybe you know, after the fact, I'll be like, "Hey, mm-hmm. that was nice playing some board games with some friends and catching up." Whereas, I, I, I wonder if you find that people that are extroverts have the opposite in terms of in terms of their expectations being like wow can't wait to get right. to this party and then right, afterwards right. being like well better luck next time <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so people have different expectations for what they think is rewarding in terms of social interactions uh and um and so there's actually been this kind of uh uh like meme out there about sort of introverts and extroverts right the intro this is great like this thing is great for introverts right like they've never been happier you know they're sitting at home, like playing video games all day. That's what they want to do anyway. Actually, I've, I've heard that. Um, and so we, in these recent data we collected, we actually looked to see if introverts and extroverts sort of fared better mm. in the, during this uh, sort of quarantine. Um, and what we found was actually there was some evidence sort of that like extroverts dropped in connection a little bit more than introverts, but they started out a lot higher. So they kind of had to, they had a, more room to drop, if you know what I mean. Um, so um, basically, not 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 as big a difference as what you'd expect. Um, mm. Yeah. So okay. I, I have uh, th- this mm-hmm. is. Uh, gosh, you must be so busy right now. I I appreciate that. I I I, I know you only have a short amount of time, um, uh, but I want to make sure and talk about one. Uh, the yeah. this face to face connection. So this is this was research you had already done about the difference between like virtually. Uh, interacting. Yeah, a little bit of research. Yeah, we we have about that. Yeah, um, yeah, we have. You want to talk about that? Yeah. Well, so what yeah. did you find? I mean, well, I think this is deeply yeah. important right yeah, yeah. now. Well, generally, and not just <laughs> me, but by others. the way, you might you might be <laughs> interested to know that that um, that one of the one of the few trips uh, essential trips that I've made outside was for a webcam i got like one of the last remaining webcams in Mm -hmm. all of wisconsin i was trying (laughs) to order one online so i didn't need to go out and it was going to be it was going to take like three months or something like that so so everyone's everyone's doing this right now yeah exactly exactly yeah well um yeah so virtual versus face-to-face so not just not just me, but other other researchers are finding that, as you might expect, that face to face interactions are more connecting, more rewarding, more happiness inducing. We've done studies where, um, for example, we did a study where we asked people, all right, for the next four weeks, we want you to do more acts of kindness. 
uh, or for the next four weeks, we want you to engage more in social interactions. Uh, so three more social interactions per week or three acts of kindness per week. And then we look to see how they uh, engaged in those interactions, both social and pro-social. And you, we, what we found is exactly what you'd expect, uh, I think, is that the most connecting, like the interactions where you feel the most sort of positive and you feel in sync and you feel like uh, you're really understood, those, are, those were the face-to-face -face ones. So that's kind of like the number one is face-to-face. Uh, after that was video video calling, you know, FaceTime, Skype, mm -hmm. Zoom. Next, I believe, was phone. So it's, there's sort of this very nice linear effect where kind of the more cues we have in, in terms of reading the other person's face or voice or body uh, language, then the, the more connecting, the more connection you feel. You're about to make me so happy. You're about mm -hmm. to settle some arguments for me. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, what about texting and emailing? Right. So that was kind of in the middle. So that was like in the middle. Uh, really? The worst, yeah. The worst oh, was social media. Web. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't win the bet. I was really well, hoping that that the texting think? and emailing was going was to be an inferior. Uh, well, it, no, no, it was inferior. No, no, it was inferior. It was inferior to phone and video calling and face to face. Oh, okay. Yes, it was. Absolutely, was. It just wasn't as low as you'd expect. Um, I see. But oh yeah, absolutely, it was inferior. The lowest was social media, so connecting yeah. over social media and web. I'm not even sure what that means, but um, actually, I could show you the. I could probably share my screen and show you that too. But um, um, anyway, yeah. So face to face video or phone are at the top. Hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. Um. So. How, I mean, how big of a difference is there? How 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 much how much do you think you're? I mean, can you make up for a lack of physically socially interacting with with people in public? Compare if you if you just get more of say virtually connecting with people. Yeah, well, that's the that's the question. That's the big question. I'm actually gonna. I'm just looking at my data right now because I want to see what. Um, yeah, how big the effect is. Um, so it's not a huge effect. I, I guess my intuition is, no, you can't completely make up for the lack of face-to-face -face interactions, but you can make up for a lot of that. So I don't know what, 70%, I don't know, 80%, 50%, it's somewhere in there. But eventually, I mean, we don't want to live in a world where everyone's on a screen. I mean, I've been thinking like, is are these people even real right and what if, what if like, <laughs> you, mean, everyone, you mean i'm not actually in space how do I know right that you're now real? <laughs> what if the pandemic has actually killed everyone and all these meetings i'm having on zoom and all these happy hours all these people are not even real i mean at some point i want to make sure they're real i want to touch them and <laughs> And breathe the same well, air as them. You know, a funny thing is that I've noticed lots of, I mean, I run in some different circles, but <laughs> I, I've noticed a lot of, uh, of simulation theory uh, yeah. stuff yeah. bubbling up everywhere. Mm -hmm. I yeah. kind of thought it was a coping mechanism and a bit of escapism, um, yeah. but, but maybe yeah. that's compounded by the fact that yeah. we're all having to yeah. communicate virtually. Right, there's this Isaac Asimov, book i think it's called the naked sun that's about exactly this it's that these these people they're living on some planet and they never see each other in person it's all like this uh-huh um and actually i kind of want to read it because it's uh, it just sounds very relevant yeah, timely. <laughs> it's science fiction though but what we're living in is not science fiction uh, this I, is real. I, I watch westworld each week and that's kind of my like mm -hmm. uh, post-apocalyptic yeah. like artificial yeah. intelligence fix yeah. for, for the moment yeah. um yeah. so so uh, I I really want to get into <clears throat> oh one one last little little mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. uh, when when you talked about measuring the difference between acts of kindness and social interactions the mm -hmm. if you were picking one or the other what was the takeaway well actually I, I didn't tell you the answer uh, there was no difference in that study which actually was su was surprising to us because we thought well the reason we even did that study is we I, I do all this research on how doing acts of kindness makes people happier makes mm -hmm. them feel connected. And so the question was, what is so special about acts of kindness? Is it the sort of the kind part, the, the pro-social part, or is it really the social part? Because most people, when we ask them to do acts of kindness, they actually do this in person. I mean, not 
post, this is pre-pandemic where you actually could do that. Um, so we actually, we asked people either to do pro-social behaviors or social behaviors. And there, we found no difference in terms of happiness, positive emotions, connection. So maybe that's why it makes, I mean, I don't know that the answer is not out yet. You know, it, we need to do more research to follow up. Is, is this, uh, I, I mean, this is why kind of volunteering combines both of these things. You're doing an act of mm -hmm. kindness in a social setting of going and working at the food bank yes, or, right, or right. what have you. Plus, people get to see you doing the acts of <laughs> yeah, kindness. Right. Exactly. It's like, it's just that I, extra little nudge. I oh, mean, that's, one, <laughs> that's I, one of the benefits, absolutely. Feeling like you're a good person, enhancing your reputation. You can find a, a girlfriend but who, you know, sees you being a kind person. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I mean, th this, this podcast gives me so much fulfillment and meaning, and I really believe mm. in science and believe I'm doing, doing a mm. good thing and putting a lot of time. But boy, do I love that validation when I get yeah. like those nice reviews yeah, and yeah, comments exactly. and everything. Exactly. I'm not going to lie to you. It yeah, feels pretty yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I could use more of them. <laughs> audience <laughs> um <laughs> hint, hint. so what what is some of the stuff that you've seen um yeah. or 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 what are your takeaways so far of comparing your february data uh to uh mm -hmm. to your april data so far you haven't noticed that much of a difference you said right right so i would say in my data set no change in life satisfaction uh, decreases in loneliness. People actually felt less lonely in April than in February. Um, yeah. And uh, so that is, I guess the, that is surprising. I think we thought, it, but it could have gone either way, right? Kind of like what you said when I asked you, what do you think the result was? You could imagine people feeling a lot more disconnected because they're suddenly, you know, not able to relate face to face with most people in their lives. Um, uh, but then they made, made up for it. You know, it's like, it's like we have this universal need to connect and to feel like we belong. And so we somehow fulfill that need in whatever way we can, like, you know, doing zoom happy hours every other night or to spending, uh, you know, spending more time. I mean, we, we see all these evidence, right? People cheering healthcare workers on their balconies and singing and that kind of thing. You know, every day I read something in the newspaper yesterday was, an artist was hanging uh, paintings on the other side of like sort of the fence around her home. So as people walk by, it's kind of like a little art gallery that they're walking by because they can't actually go into real art galleries. Mm -hmm. And then this couple who are classical musicians that are giving concerts on their front porch for people who are passing by. So, you know, we're, we're doing what we can to connect, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be tough it, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes and i'd say that it's going to be a little tough to predict because you have like okay at first it's like all right look more time with my family jeez i've been meaning to get more time with the kids and then and then a little more time goes by and it's like oh my daughter interrupting my inter oh that's that's still cute uh, uh, in, a, in another month people are going to be like all right, I guess I make my own hazmat suit so I can get back to my cubicle. Never thought I'd miss my cubicle. So, <laughs> and then so all the all, and all the mar all the all the marriages, right? Like your your uh, significant other spouse, right? Working right beside. So my husband is working like just uh, six feet from me uh, on the other side of a door, <laughs> yeah. and uh, that's been hard. And my, my one of my kids. So I have two college age kids and then two little ones. And one of my oldest, who's about to turn 21, um, gave me this article from the New York Times, which suggests spousal distancing. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, like, I have, I have, uh, I have one of my one of my uh, good friends who she's been um, she's been married for. 17 years or something mm -hmm. like that. Basically, high school sweethearts. Yeah. yeah. They're and they're a great couple. And there, if you ask them what their secret is, it's just like, oh, we have separate bedrooms and we don't <laughs> see each other that much. <laughs> no, I love that. And then you could have you have novelty and variety that way because the secret is novelty and variety. So you could have novelty and variety that way. Yeah, uh, this was this wasn't nice, in, but, yeah. they they didn't they didn't talk about quarantines and marriage vows. Yeah. Or people yeah. people would have thought a little <laughs> a little bit. I think of I bet there's a I bet there's a fair number 
of of weddings that got postponed and now those people living together are now now they're just going uh, to be called off <laughs> completely well i just i just got an email from a friend who has a friend in wuhan uh who says that both marriage rates and divorce rates have gone up so both marriage and divorce which makes sense right you could sort of see both things happening yeah yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a very like bipolar sort of a time. It's <laughs> yeah. like a lot of very exciting, like, whoa, new opportunities. <laughs> and then like the depths of, <laughs> of the dark, <laughs> the, the, yeah. the darkest moments are. And are then that someone, and the, right. And then someone was saying, God, what is happening to infidelity? Like, does this mean, you know, it's, the rates of infidelity are going down because there's just no opportunities for that? Plus, if it's, I mean, there's also these considerations of like, um, porn or something like that might have might have seemed pretty benign in the past, but now that porn is as much of a social interaction as anything <laughs> else is, <laughs> now is that shit. I was thinking of porn too because um, I read somewhere right, like like uh, th- through the roof, right? Like use of porn has gone through the roof which makes sense. People are at home. On the other hand, people are also at home stuck with other people in their household. So yeah. you think that there's not as much privacy, but I yeah, guess they're finding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, I, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm actually quarantined with my parents at the moment because <laughs> when, when, I, when I went to the quarantine, it was, it was when I canceled gigs out until April and Michigan was going to be my next stop. <laughs> So yeah. I was like, yeah, go visit the fam for a little I, bit. I don't, but Shane, I don't really want you to continue that thought. So, but anyway. No, yeah. But no, just in, in terms of privacy, I, I was, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm actually going a different direction than the porn <laughs> conversation. Um, okay. I'm, uh, um, where I was going was I, I've, I've, been, I've been desperately needing to get a uh, – a mushroom trip under my belt to cope with this quarantine, but it's making it very difficult to do. I, I feel I feel like I'm in high school again, yeah, trying yeah. to like sneak out of the house to go and do drugs. Right. Well, I I, feel, I I probably should talk on this podcast, but yes, there's, there's been lots of discussion of how to create these kinds of experiences, whether with parents or with kids. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, it's it's a, it's a it's a challenging for everyone. <laughs> so, do you have any, um, you know, uh, j- just before uh, before we wrap up, I don't want to put you on the spot too much, yeah. um, but. But one of my favorite things about the quarantine is, is mm-hmm. everyone seems to have their filters off a little more than usual. Mm-hmm. And these these typically very cautious scientists uh, that I'm used to interviewing yeah. Yeah. and say all of their most interesting things <laughs> after I hit stop on the recording device. That's funny. <laughs> As I'm, I'm sure you understand. That's funny. Uh, um, I, uh, yeah. All of a sudden... There, yeah. I, I'm having some less filtered conversations yeah. than normal with folks. Yeah. It's been really yeah. refreshing. Yeah, yeah. I think people are having similar, similarly open conversations with their families, yeah. and friends, and like everyone's really opening up. This is yeah. one of these beautiful, wonderful things that I think is coming out of all of this. Um, mm. And uh, but if if I could. Uh, yeah. If I could get you to maybe wildly speculate, I'm not going to hold you to this yeah. on 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 how how you think when you when you go back and study uh, do a follow up study with these same folks from February and and now April in yeah. say June. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you you have any uh, what, what do you what do you make right. a prediction wow, as what, what a you might see? Crazy question. <laughs> yeah. um, and actually, early June is when I was sort of thinking, we were thinking of following them up. Uh, you know, yeah, ob- obviously the answer is going to depend on what's happening at that time. And if we're in it for the long haul, I mean, it, and it's, it is depressing, right? Because even if things, you know, I mean, I was reading like no more concerts, no more dinners with 10 people, no more conferences for a long time, right? If things so go if really we, well, you're still going to need probably a vaccine before there's concerts. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that, to me, as an extrovert, as someone who really loves traveling and going to uh, going to a conference or a festival or something, it's just, yeah, it's, that's very depressing. So once that that hits, that kind of 
right? That knowledge that it's, things are, it's going to be a very long time. So I, I, I can imagine there'd be less, yeah, less happiness, uh, less sense of connection when it, it really, uh, what's the word? Yeah, it just like really hits you. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, I've talked to people about this, how they, they kind of, a lot, a lot of people are saying, maybe you already mentioned this too, like day to day, we're sort of distracted, we're busy, we're having these like Zoom calls. But then once in a while, it just kind of hits you, you know, and then those people who live in cities, like I'm, I live in Santa Monica, this beautiful place. And when I walk, when I look outside my window, it doesn't actually look any different. You know, in fact, there's all these neighbors that have come out of the woodwork and they're walking. I never, I never saw before because they used to just get in their cars. Um, But if you live in a city, right, it looks more apocalyptic when you look out Mm. the window because it looks so different. But anyway, so my prediction is if things are, if we're in it for the long haul, you're going to see less happiness and less connection in June. Yeah. I, I mean, the day to day for me is like, you know, there, there's, there's two very different problems where, where I had, um, mm-hmm. you know, I was on the road a lot and I was, I was feeling like a semblance of financial security, mm-hmm. like really, really stable income mm-hmm. for the first time. Cause I was doing the show stand up science. It was like three mm-hmm. shows a week. I was no longer mm-hmm. at the mercy of the whims of comedy clubs and whenever they felt like uh, booking me and um and then but sometimes because of the touring schedule um being such a grind i wasn't maybe Mm -hmm. feeling as creative and so so there's these moments for Mm -hmm. for i think most any comic where you won't write a decent joke or come up with a decent idea for like a month or something like that Mm -hmm. and you'll be like Am I ever going to have a yeah. new idea again? Exactly. Did yeah, the yeah. joke machine yeah. stop? Am yeah. I, oh no. And there, there's yeah. this whole, that kind of crisis. Yeah. I am so far from anything like that yeah. right now. Yeah. Right now, uh, the day to day, I come up with two new ideas for, pro- or, or, mm-hmm. or, or mm-hmm. 10 new ideas for projects that I could yeah. do every single day. I have, I have more ideas than I could ever possibly pursue. Wow. Um, and that's very exciting and like mm-hmm. makes me feel good and like, oh, I made some fun posts today, got some retweets, put a cool video out there. People mm-hmm. seem to like that. Had a great interview with someone. Yeah. Terrific. And then the, oh, crap, is anyone, is any of this going to pay me money is like the, the long term right. um, uh, stressor for me. So, right. so I get a little bit of both worlds. But you are going to find such interesting that if you keep on... Um, uh, I I think one of the good things for people is that they're going to be experiencing the most neuroplasticity that they've ever, because things are changing Mm. so rapidly. Mm. And I think a lot of people are kind of Mm. uh, uh, stuck in a nine to five rut that humans weren't really Mm. evolved to uh, Mm. be doing the same kind of repetitive tasks day in and day out. And now things are changing so quickly. So every two months as you go and if you happen to evaluate yeah. things, you're going to be yeah. like, okay, now how are things once you start to loosen guidelines and people can yeah. start having small gatherings? Okay, that's exciting at first. And then people get used to that. And then yeah. people can go to concerts again. Yeah. That's exciting at first. And yeah. then people can, this is going to be a so, very interesting time to get so much data. Right. Yeah. So it'd be good actually, maybe that it's gradual because one thing I study is hedonic adaptation, right? Which is this phenomenon that, that human beings are really really good and very quick at adapting to changes in their lives, which is good in the, in the negative domain, but not so good in the positive domain. And so if we get everything back all at once, then we will adapt, you know, eventually pretty soon and then go back to normal baseline. But right. But if we kind of phase it in, then in a way it's actually how to craft the most happiness. Yeah. Uh, we're, we'll be so, small incremental yeah. gains and in getting right. our liberties. Right. Like one of my best friends back. is in Barcelona. And so she's, she just can't wait until she can go outside. They can't even walk outside. So to her, that's going to be like amazing. And so you have that and then you can do the next thing. Um, but you know, you were talking about psychedelics earlier and I, and I was thinking about what is that? I think it was from the Michael Pollan book, that metaphor of like the snow covered hill. And imagine that it's like this just fresh snow and then you a thought or behavior happens and it's like a little sled going down the hill and it creates mm-hmm. these tracks, right? Mm-hmm. And then the next thought is going to be a little bit more likely to go into that track. And then you take a psychedelic and it just kind of like flattens that, that yeah. snow. And, I, and you're kind of saying that that's what's happening now, right? It's like we're kind of flattening those yeah. tracks, those trails, right? Yep. Starting I, all over again? Yeah, I just, I just had a... Uh... 
I just had a, I did a special event um, with, with psychedelic researchers comparing what's happening right now to the psychedelic experience. I, I, I find it, I find it to be a very, very similar. Uh, Great. <laughs> um, Great minds think alike. Ex- yeah. Experience. Yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. And um, so, so yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know what, this is, this is one one of the things you you've reminded me to uh, work on my kindness a little bit because I, I definitely um, for anyone following me on Twitter is probably like yeah you need to work on your kindness a little. Tw- Twitter's <laughs> just the the, the yeah. dumpster yeah. fire that allows me to yeah. uh, vent whatever frustrations um, yeah. that I have and then I put my positive right. stuff on Instagram, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, that might be something that we'll have to, mm-hmm. as we're all getting used to the digital, digital virtual space, mm-hmm. how, how to, how to treat people more as if, as if everyone's a face-to-face interaction might, might be something that makes our virtual mm-hmm. world a better place mm-hmm. to live in. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I love, I actually am now uh, loving this idea of these small incremental gains. I preach this to people all of the time. As someone who's had their dreams come true, yeah, I've yeah, seen the yeah. downside of having yeah, these yeah. big peaks. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And research and research supports that. We want to have, yeah, it has to, on the on the upswing, upslope, small incremental gains. You know, and then you adapt to that, and then you get something else. And uh, yeah. I'm all, so, I'm but on, on the downside, you want a nice sharp bottom out, and then I, I think so. Rip, rip think off so. the bandaid. Yeah, exactly, and then and then stop because the, the worst <laughs> possible scenario is that you keep deteriorating, and and it's uncertain how much or when, and you'll never stop. So, like the the worst disease that you can have is ALS because you keep getting worse, right? And so, yeah. when you ask ALS patients, okay, no matter how bad off they are, what if we just stop the disease today? And they'd be like, that would be, okay. that would be fine. You know, I would adapt. Oh, that would be fine. It's just the fact that it keeps getting worse. So we, we want to keep getting better slowly and with wor- and we want to stop getting worse. Even if it's really bad, we want to just stop. Right. I've been, I guess I've been living life correctly uh, during yeah. this quarantine because I've been learning little bits. I've been chipping yeah. away all throughout yeah. the day, yeah. these yeah. little gains. And then once in a while, I'll just go on like a two day bender hit rock bottom <laughs> real quick yeah. and, then, oh, du- right. and then dust myself off. And, and yeah, that back. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. I know I'm already yeah. keeping you a few minutes longer than mm-hmm. we agreed upon, so I apologize. Um, yeah. But this was a fantastic conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, go, go feed your daughter. Um, or whatever. whatever I don't know what she wants. <laughs> whatever <laughs> needs to be done. And, and uh, I, I, I hope you take care yeah. with your very full yeah. household and yeah. and uh, yeah. manage this and and keep on collecting. I would I would love if you're if you're yeah. ever up for it. Yeah. Um, come June or whenever you get some <laughs> yeah. new results, I would absolutely love an update from you. And I'm cool. sure the cool. Thank you. Well. Thank you. And Reach you out you anytime. Be- no big deal. Yeah. And you'd be nice to your parents. In oh, Wisconsin. I will. They're wonderful. They're wonderful people. Okay. They just don't. Uh, they, I just can't trip balls with them. That's all. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, so <laughs> thank all you right. for your time, and Great. thank you, listeners, thank you. for being such wonderful, curious people. We'll talk with you next episode. I hope you enjoyed the episode, guys. If you did, hit subscribe. Maybe go through, check out some highlights if you haven't listened to or watched past episodes and maybe don't have the time to watch all of them on YouTube. We have highlights. If you go to my YouTube page, there's a whole bunch of highlights to choose from. It'll help you select which episodes you're the most interested in. Leave some comments, some suggestions for topics or guests you would like to hear from in the future. And if you enjoy my mission of doing everything I can to put time and money and energy into trying to get these people, these heroes of mine that aren't celebrities, just regular old hard-working folks doing their best to try to work to make the world a better place and normally don't have much of a platform to communicate what they do with the public other than things like this show. If you like that I do this, you can support me on Patreon or Venmo or other things down in the links in the description. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next episode.